we're going to get into worship. Oh, and Chuck's getting his headphones on. Here we go. Yeah.
worship, Lord, just to love you, Lord, and love the name that you have, Jesus. Thank you for a faithful, unfailing, unfading kind of love, God, that we can always depend on, Lord, in the chaos of our everyday, Lord, in the chaos of our storm, God. We always know that you are the still in that, God. Thank you so much, and we all say, Amen. Good evening. Good evening. You tired? Somebody left the telly. iPhone with an otter box. No? No? All right. It is a nice one. I don't know who's it. I can't. It's locked. I don't know. Maybe one of the students. Students are in there. So, all right. Um, some quick announcements before we get in our study tonight. We're going to, by the way, if you want to grab your Bibles and maybe pass some Bibles out, we're going to uh, be in Genesis 11. Who needs a Bible? Raise your hand. We'll bring you one. Joe, holler at me after service. Hold your hand up if you need a Bible. Right over here. All right, a couple of announcements uh, while you're turning to Genesis 11. Number one, the summer slide is this Saturday. Summer Slide is a huge event. Our church does it every year now. Uh, last year we had 600 kitties, uh, not cloned their families that came out and partook. It's not here at the church. It's an outreach. We go into the community, share the love of Jesus with them in a practical way, and the whole church shows up. And uh, So if you've already signed up to serve, there's all kinds of things you can do. You can serve food. You can greet. Uh, you can help with the slides. You can help with inflatables. Miss Clarissa. If you missed the briefing, I have briefing sheets here. Pass those out, big guy. Thank you, brother. He said, I ain't here to serve. You got a bad attitude, man. <laughs> but uh, so that's going to be huge. It's going to be awesome. It's from 3 to 6. And if you're setting up, you need to be there 1 o'clock. If you're helping to set up and they need help setting up, um, so, having a baptism Sunday, August the 28th. If you've been saved and have not been baptized, you need to be baptized. And uh, so I'd ask that you come see me or one of the other pastors. We'll put you on the docket for that night for baptism. Women's Fellowship, we've got a nice slide for that. It's going to come up August the 19th. There is a white elephant bingo party, Troy. There it is. White Elephant Bingo Party. It's going to be held at the church beginning at 7 o'clock. All the women in the church are welcome. Uh, young ladies as well. And so anyway, that's going to be a, a blowout. It's going to be lots of fun. So all of our ladies should be at that. It's a great place to get to know each other too. If you're like, I don't know anybody, that's why you need to come. So you know people. 
family, right? Then we got a men's thing going on just about a week and a half later. It's going to be a men's weekend. So I've got sign-up sheets. David, if you'll help me here, um, putting these out in the different sections. There's two sides to these sign-up sheets because men's weekend encompasses two days. Friday, which is the men's convention, it's a ministry convention, and there's a cost to it. It's our district statewide convention in Lexington, and it's $45 per man. So if you'd like to go, you can bring your student, your teenager for free, but they've got to be in middle school or high school. And uh, so I'm going to be at that. A lot of the men are signing up for that. Make sure you sign up on the clipboard for it. We'll get you registered, and you can pay uh, in the kiosk in the back. Okay? You can use a card or... So what I was going to say was, if you're not, you can go to one thing or both things. If you want, you can just come Saturday, but you still got to sign up so we know how much food to make. Saturday is going to be guns, cornhole, and barbecue. Those three things go together. Those three things go together. I'm going to explain it. Friday is $45, Saturday is free. Friday is the ministry convention, it's $45. Saturday is the cornhole, the guns, and the, and the barbecue, and it's free. So if you ain't got no money, and you can't get somebody to spot you $45, just come Saturday. But everybody needs to come Saturday at least, okay? So anyway, sign up for that. Everybody sign up. Every man. Yeah, come to both, sign up on both sides. And every woman needs to sign up for the women's... Are there sign-ups for the elephant party? No, there's not. Okay. I don't know. Why can't you? All right. We're going to jump into our study tonight. Who said what? Yes, Brother Chuck. For the men's convention? Yeah. They could carpool by coming out here and meeting at a certain time. Is there a, where's Big T at? Hey, Nathan, tell Big T that we need, we got a question for him. We got a question for Big T. No. No. I haven't had a lot of time to research it, to be honest. Huh? So what? Oh, Ivy's in the youth. I was looking for Ivy. It's not. It's not September. It's October. No, it's not October. It's August. It's this month. I didn't make them, but I'll take credit for it. Oh, I just had a question. Some of you guys was mentioned was carpooling to the men's convention on Friday. Is that something that... You mean on the 26th? Yes, Friday. We can do that. Okay, what time would they need to meet here if they're going to do that? If you need to ride up to Lexington for the men's convention, the dinner's at... Can people be here at 4.30? The dinner's at 5.30, so you'd be here at 4.30. Yeah. And uh, stuff opens at 5. I think. Stuff opens at 5. So we can get there at 4.30. That way we can, uh, we can get up there in time and not miss anything. How's that sound? Yeah. yeah, so I will be here at 4.30 or a little before so we can all carpool and go together. How We'll have a great time. And you already told them about the next day? Yes, sir. You already tell about the Young at Heart for Sunday? Hey, Troy, put our young at heart little thing on there, or is it too late for that? He may not be able to. You got your stuff up there. Young at heart at Roosters this coming Sunday, and that's, that's 50 plus young at heart. If you're 50 or older, or if you feel, feel young as we do, you can come with us too. 
but we're going to meet at Roosters probably right around 12.30 this Sunday and just have some good fellowship together and some good food together. All right. Yes. When's the $45 due? You're giving it to the church. Give the $45 to the church and we'll register you and pay. So you'll funnel the money through the church. Make sure you mark on it what it's for. Teenagers are free. But they don't get a t-shirt. I don't know. Before we go. Before we leave. I'll probably pay for it a week in advance. And even if you hadn't paid yet, just pay before you go. It'll come in. Brother Wayne, if he notices you don't pay, he'll make a visit to your house. Our, uh, our church treasurer keeps a staff, a bow staff, and he'll come to your house with it. <laughs> Where's the receipt? Yeah. A great example? Well, I don't know what to tell you. You let us run our things, you run your things. How about that? All right, let's go ahead and let's just pray. We're going to study the Word of God right now. Let's just pray. Father, as we get into your Word tonight, as we study creation and how we came into this place of being, just ask God that you would illuminate our hearts through your Word, enlighten us, Lord God, through your Holy Spirit. And I just pray that you bless our study time tonight in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So last night we talked about, or last week we talked about after the flood and the things that transpired directly after an ice age. And uh, after his family, after the flood, Moses' family was told to do something. What were they told to do? Noah, I'm sorry. Noah, <laughs> it's the old guy with the gray beard in the Bible. Noah was told to do something. What was he told to do? After the ark, after the flood, and after they got off and made a sacrifice, there was a rainbow, and God talked to him, and he told him to do something. Multiply and fill the earth. It's Genesis 9-7, if you want to look at it. Um, then we get to Genesis chapter 11, and that's where we're going to start reading right now. Genesis 11, verse 1. Now the whole earth had one language and a common speech. Can you imagine that? The whole earth has one language and a common speech. And the whole earth is residing in the same place because it's not long after the flood and they populate and multiply. But it says, as men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar. Your note in your Bible says Shinar is what? Say it out loud. Babylonia. Shinar is Babylonia. And they settled in Babylonia. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and let's bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone. They used tar for mortar. Then they said, let's build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make a name for ourselves and listen, and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, If as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down, confuse their languages so that they will not understand each other. Verse 8, So the Lord scattered them from there over the whole earth. They stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel. A.K.A. Babylon. It's actually the same word. It's just translated here Babel, but it's the same word translated Babylon. It's the same place. Because there the Lord confused 
the languages of the whole world, and from there the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. It's a very interesting passage. It really shines light on things that are to come because Babylon is later used, well, it later becomes a, a nation, uh, and that nation is destroyed. It was the head of gold. It was a credible, credible nation uh, with great wealth and technology. Um, God took them out, basically. And the future holds a new Babylon. Talking about, spoken of throughout Revelation, which we, with which the beast becomes the leader of. Now, it's interesting. What they were doing then dismayed God because of what reason? Why did God not want this happening? Because they, weren't, they were disobeying God. He said, multiply, fill the earth. They said, let's stay in one place. And God saw that and said, what about this happening? Before that, what did he say about what they were doing? If as one people, one language, they can do this, nothing they try to do will be impossible to them. They'll be able to do anything. Now, if you think about it, we've always... I remember growing up, if I wanted to communicate with somebody on the other side of the world, I had to have a pen pal. And that pen pal had to know my language or be learning my language in Japan or wherever. To, with technology, today with the internet, the world might as well be speaking one language. There is worldwide communication, even though we're spread out. And the Bible talks about a day that's coming when ten rulers of the world will give all of their power to one man, and they will be one people again. The whole world will be one nation under one leader with one currency. That is what Revelation tells us is the new Babylon. And it's coming, yes. Are they, are they talking about like, God's talking about their reliance going on themselves rather than the reliance going on him? Is that what that means or something else? I think it, no, I, I don't, I mean it can mean that, but I think what it means is what it says. Over time, they could have done whatever they wanted to do. They would have accomplished great and awesome things ahead of the time scale, ahead of the timeline of, de of God. It wasn't time for that yet. And, and they needed to go out and fill the earth and spread out because God was going to bring a savior through a specific nation, calling a man, and then it was going to go to Christ dying for the sins of the world. That was God's path. That was God's plan. They were going to mess it up through their disobedience. Babylon represents disobedience to God. Confusion. That's what Babylon means, confusion. And so God came and confused their languages, and they split up. Now, that's very important when it comes to, not necessarily the age of the earth, but when it comes to human evolution. Because the Bible tells us man came from Adam and Eve. He was formed perfect and whole. He did not evolve. Man was dwindled down to Noah and his wife and their three children and their wives, and they repopulated the earth. They all came from that group. Human evolution tells us we came from chemical soup that evolved into single-cell organisms that later evolved into multi-celled and more complicated organisms and eventually primates, and then humans, and different types of humans, and we were the only humans that won out of the uh, multiple human variety or man varieties. Uh, that is absolutely opposed to what the Bible says, and the Bible tells us how man developed and how they spread out over the earth, and it's not like what evolution would teach let me ask you this question. Would you say that modern man is smarter or dumber than ancient man? Why would you say the modern man is dumber than ancient man? We couldn't build a city like that, Larry? They were, they were wiser, and God said and predicted they would get wiser. Okay. 
knowledge will, knowledge will abound in the better days. Okay. Brother Chuck? We have now, even though it's here and God's released that information to us, they had to invent things more. You know what I'm saying? More so you think their circumstances caused them to be smarter? They're, they're a lot more think outside the box than a lot of people, you know, especially was, the ones on I-75. Do you think they were smarter intellectually, IQ-wise? Yeah, in, in some ways, yeah. Yes. I think that we probably have further gene degradation than they did because they were closer to Adam Eve than we are. Okay. So you're saying the many years since the original humans were created, they've devolved. Things have gotten worse. Yeah. yeah, to add on to what Shannon just said, Adam and Eve were perfect, as close to perfect as a human being could be. So just figure after all these years, we're a mess. Sa'era. Sa'era. I got a story behind that. I'll tell you later. It's a funny story. Um, what I was going to say is, if you just think back to when we were children, which was the 80s, me and you, um, we used to use maps, like physical maps to go places. And now we use GPS. We use our phone. Like now we use Google, and we used to actually have to go to the library, get an encyclopedia, and look it up. You see what I'm saying? Like things have become so dependent upon technology that we've really dumbed ourselves down. And technology is the smart one. We're Didn't we invent the technology though? Some, somebody did, and they were really smart because they're like multi-billionaires. How many people missed but the card catalogs? it's not catalogs? helping us any. I loved card catalogs. Card catalogs. <laughs> what? Say again? I said I used to, how many people loved card catalogs? You know, at the library. The card catalog system, I love that. I felt so cool pulling the card catalog. Dewey Decimal System, yeah. Loved it. I loved it. I can't even use that knowledge anymore. I thought we were taught. They don't exist anymore. Uh, evolution would tell us that people are getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Um, I don't think that's biblical. I don't think people are getting smarter. Um, this is kind of the origin of human species, uh, according to the Smithsonian, you know, that uh, all of these were different types of man, and that they would, one of them won out, and is us today, started about 200,000 years ago. Um, but about two and a half million years ago, these were all there. And they were fighting for, you know, development of the earth and who was going to, I guess, be the survival of the fittest. Um, the evolutionary teaching of man getting better and better is very indoctrinated into our society, into our school systems, uh, on our social media. Things start out simple, they become more complex. We've already disproven this with entropy, the second law of thermodynamics. Nothing gets better over time. Nothing gets better. Everything depletes over time. It turns to chaos. It, 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 it leans towards disorder, and eventually things fall apart. Uh, the reality of all verified history, including the Bible's history, uh, depicts man at his best in the beginning. And we've been on a downhill slope ever since then. Uh, ancient man, we have discovered, had very advanced civilizations. So much so that there's many, I mean, you can go Google it now. You can, you can go home and look at it. I mean, there's a Discovery Channel putting shows out too that they have no idea how ancient man did what they did. The types of things they find uh, just blow their minds because there are things that we can't do today they were able to do somehow two or three thousand years ago. Uh, 
Our ancestors had a simplified ingenuity. They found ways to do things brilliantly, brilliantly and economically. Today we do many of the same things, however, they're much more complex and more expensive. And you know, we have to remember, we are also generations of knowledge that have been passed on to us. We've experienced the overlap and the overlap of all of this knowledge that's no longer lost, it's being brought to us. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're born into knowledge. So we're building on that knowledge of those that went up before us. They, they didn't have that. A lot of the things we do today are much more complex, more expensive. We've built on the work of our ancestors through transferred and handed down knowledge. We're not smarter. We just have the privilege of history and communication. Communication is major when it comes to knowledge because when you have all the people working together, like you did at Babel and like you do a lot more now, it brings a lot more wisdom and knowledge. Jeff. Besides communication, which is so, as you uh, pointed out, is so available and prevalent, uh, transportation is a big part of that. And because of those two things, it's like, your, like was said in, I think it was the Jurassic Park uh, book and movie, um, the scientists there talked about how we stand on the shoulders of those who went before us. We keep accumulating like a sand pile that gets ever larger, we've accumulated knowledge because of the density and of uh, the population and the ability to communicate and also the transportation allowing for fossil fuel use and all these things build on themselves so that we can lift things through mechanisms, hydraulics and internal combustion engines and whatever, where these people had to figure out a labor, a manual or uh, animal labor mechanism for doing it. Yeah. And um, necessity is the mother of invention and ingenuity. These people each had to figure out for themselves how to accomplish things. We tend to just glide along with, you know, all that's laid before us. Yeah, absolutely. Well put. Ancient civilizations including advancements um, that we didn't know existed until we found out later on. They had indoor plumbing, they had piped hot water. Early civilizations were labeled mysteries because we don't know how or understand how they did the things they did. Uh, I'm not, there's lots of pictures up here. I can't, I'm not gonna go through all of it. Because, but that's toilets there on the bottom right, you see that? That was, that was actually full plumbing, it was plumbed. Um, things from two, 3,000 years ago uh, I got some pictures just today. Uh, ancient Egyptian concrete has lasted 2,000 years. Our concrete today lasts 50 years. <laughs> I can't pronounce this thing right here. Uh, they, it's about, I think, 2,000 years old, 1,500, 2,000 years old. And they believe it, it was a, a type of calculator or small computer. I, I can't tell you how it works, and I don't think they can either, but what, what's that called? Does anybody know what that's called? No. I didn't even write the word down because it was hard to even pronounce it by reading it. Uh, they found batteries from th over a thousand years ago. Uh, these cups are a couple thousand years old, and they use, utilize nanotechnology that we're just getting into now. They were able to grind up dust our gold dust to the point of it being so small, it was, it was literally like nanotechnology. It's, I can't remember the size of it. It was so many, I can't remember exactly, but so small that we don't even know how they could have done it. But so that's, that's the same cup with different light. It changes colors and stuff. Um, this is a lens from a telescope from 3,000 years ago. Uh, things that are, they're, Brilliant! The people that lived back then were able to do some of the things they're doing. Uh, metallurgy, the, the, uh, working with uh, alloys. We discover alloys in uh, archaeology that we don't even know how they made that. Like it has properties that we can't duplicate today. Uh, we see buildings and things that uh, have such huge blocks uh, we cannot comprehend or even begin to. I mean, we're trying to figure it out. We can't figure out how they moved 
some of the blocks that they moved and how they took them so far. They, they cut them out and they put them together and they were, you know, miles and miles apart. We don't know how they did it. Ancient man was incredibly smart. Chuck? Yeah. Starts with an A. Did you look it up or did you know? Yeah. I'm trying to impress you, but I, yeah, I looked at it. A N T I K. I started smart off and go anti Kentucky Thera, but I didn't say it that way. A N T I K Y T H E R A mechanism. Look it up if you want to. Jeremy, do you have something? Well, we've been talking about, like, you know, back to ancient man had to, like you said, figure things out for themselves. And, uh, Kind of like saying uh, people nowadays, you know, man's dumber nowadays. I kind of believe that because the government's got a little control in that too as well, I think. I'm no conspiracy theorist, but like today, we just, you know, we don't try to figure nothing out. I mean, you just get on YouTube or whatever, and then uh, you got the, the government, I think, kind of controls us a little bit through the mind work, you know, too as well. So, and like with education changing nowadays, and they're trying to do all this, like they're trying to keep us dumbed down because... They know the potential, you know, and they don't want everybody to be as smart as we could be. I think a lot of people today, if you took everything away from them technology-wise and threw them out somewhere like where our ancestors lived, me and my wife watched, uh, have watched a show called Alone, I think it's called, and people are just, you know, they're all on there. They give them tools, though. Uh, but I, I'm think, I, I watched it, I thought, you know, even the best person on this show could not outlast the weakest person from 500 years ago or 1,000 years ago. They would have just, they would have survived and thrived. And we're just, you know, starving to death out there. So anyway, modern man was not dumber. Uh, if you go back 6,000 years ago, modern man was at its pinnacle, was at its peak, was living longer, was healthier, uh, was smarter, was bigger, stronger, all of these things, and entropy has run its course. You know, the curse is on the earth, and death is a part of our nature now. And so we are slowly dying and slowly running out. Uh, the earth and the universe are slowly wearing out and wearing down. And, and it's the same with genetics and our DNA. Um, I like this one. This one I read about, there's some ancient air conditioning uh, in these ruins, they would, if I remember correctly, they would, they would dig deep down into the earth, uh, like 60 feet, put a grating over top of it, cold air, you know, the, the, it, you know, the earth, it's cold, and they would fashion um, ducts, basically, carved with stone, and uh, where it would bring air from the outside, flow through, basically the 60 feet of basement, and blow, blow the cold. Why is this doing this? And blow the cold air up. through. So it was always, even though it was on the, near the equator, it was always like 65, 70 degrees inside that, those ruins. It's incredible. I want to do that at my house, and my electric bill will go way down. Evolution is the opposite. It says... Men are getting better and smarter, and evolution, as we talked about in, in the early classes, also breeds racism uh, because of the, you know, like Darwin's theory of, uh, of, of evolution and his books of the origin of species and of favored races, and uh, so they believe evolutionists that that is the survival of the fittest and that there is no God, and so it's a dangerous theory. God's Word tells us we are all of the same lineage. God's word tells us that we're all of the same family. Science backs it up because genetically we can all be tested and proven to be of the same family. Every single one of us. Uh, it's called mitochondrial Eve. And this is how they, they found it out. And, and this, is, this is what mitochondrial Eve looks like to an evolutionist. So uh, that's actually, if you look it up, that's mitochondrial Eve. We all came from a common mother. Anybody remember mitochondria from biology class? The powerhouse of the cell, right? Well, you can pull DNA from the mitochondria, and it gives you a maternal uh, uh, lineage. Every human they've ever tested had the same mom somewhere back there. They say she lived like 2,000 years ago or something, or more than that. I can't remember exactly, but she lived way on back. But... Uh, we know who the true Eve is. 
they have discovered that we all come from the same mother. And uh, this is the one I pulled from. Is this what Eve looked like? This is the one I pulled from the internet. This was, uh, um, who had, ever heard of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? They don't like black people. They think Jesus and Satan were brothers. And Jesus was chosen over Satan to come and populate earth. That was going to be his planet. Satan got mad. And he came and started populating himself with all black people. That's what the Mormons teach. Yeah. Look it up. It's horrible. And so they're, at its core, Mormonism is incredibly racist. And uh, they believe all black people are from the devil. So... Yeah, we're getting into other stuff. But anyway, this is what I think more likely Eve looked like. I think she was beautiful. It's beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah, right here. This was Eve. Right here. If evolution is not true, there's no missing links. There's no transition from one thing to another thing, and there's never, they've never found these fossils anyway. Uh, but they've made some up. Uh, this is Piltdown Man. I remember, does anybody remember these in class in, in high school, middle school? I remember these being in our textbooks, and this is like decades after they've realized that these are hoaxes. And they kept them in the textbooks. And I didn't figure that out until years later when I started following Answers in Genesis. And I was like, that was in my textbook. You mean they debunked that in the 70s or whatever it was? And they still had it in my textbook in the 80s and 90s? This is Piltdown Man. For more than 50 years, people were led to believe that this ancient creature was another supposed ancestor of modern man. Two scientists eventually took a closer look, found out that Piltdown Man was a fraud. This invented creature was a composite of the jawbone of an orangutan and the skull of a small child. The original discoverers had stained the bone fragments to gain recognition and promote, promote falsehood in evolution. And, and with every one of these missing links, fossils, they always put a drawing behind it. There's always an artist behind it that paints the picture they want you to see. Nobody saw this, <laughs> you know, but that's what they wanted you to see. They wanted you to have that mental picture. Nebraska man, uh, an ancient tooth was discovered in Nebraska. They drew an entire imaginary society based on a tooth they found. True. Later they found out it belonged to a pig. But this was in the school textbooks. Java man, prehistoric man, was found on the island of Java, was reported to be a missing link between man and ape. After some serious study, it was found that the two pieces of Java man were from different skulls from two different areas of the island. Both were from the same species, probably an orangutan, but they were not the parts of a man. Recent human skulls were also later discovered in the same area of rock or layer of rock that they found these, meaning modern man lived along with them. Peking man was another one. Man-like creature found in China during the early part of the 20th century. He was small. No other scientists have directly observed the site. It has not actually been seen in more than 50 years. All the examples of Peking man were reported to have the back of their skull smashed in. And that matched the people of the region's practice of eating monkey brains, where they would smash in the back of the head and eat the brains and... Uh, Modern humans were also found at the site of Peking Man, so it could not have been a transitional fall. Most people know Lucy. I've been to see Lucy uh, in, in uh, the museum. Uh, one of the latest or later finds, it was almost universally accepted as mankind's ancestor, and the artwork is beautiful. Isn't she pretty? And she's obviously posing for the photo. And she's an Australopithecus, that is actually more like a monkey than a man. When the bones were studied by spectrograph, they were found to match that of a chimpanzee, be similar to that, rather than a man. Lucy, too, is a mosaic with bones assembled from different locations. And uh, this is just a few. I'm sure there's more. I, my, 
depth of my knowledge doesn't go, I'm not super smart in all this stuff. I just gathered information uh, over time. But uh, if you go to the Creation Museum, you'll probably find a lot more support for these types of things. Yes? Something to be aware of is that the skulls and pelvises and other parts, but especially those, are virtually always reconstructed from a lot of fragments, which gives them a lot, much like these illustrations, a lot of um, artistic license to create the shape that they want it to be to try to prove what they're trying to prove. Yeah. So they'll create, they'll recreate the pelvis, which you know is very fragmented, so that it looks more like a weight-bearing biped rather than more like the chimpanzee. Um, doc, the, the, um, the late doctor, I can't mention, uh, mentioned that in one of his. Lucy, she's no lady, I think was the video, where he showed them correcting some of the problems they had with a pelvis of one of these australopithecines so that they could recreate it. Yeah. They have a picture in their mind as they go to work on it. They got to make it fit. Yes. I have a question. So if via evolution we are getting better and we came from apes and monkeys, which are incredibly strong animals and also have hair so they don't have to wear clothes. Why would we get weaker and naked? I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. Neanderthal is the last one I'll talk about. Neanderthal is uh, well documented. Me and Jeff were talking about this, I think, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, prehistoric man first discovered, uh, it was just an arm when they first discovered him, yet the scientific community at that time fabricated an entire ancient society to surround that arm. Uh, again, they draw it according to what they want you to see, a bunch of dumb, prehistoric, cave-dwelling, half-man, half-animals. Um, scientists have found quite a few Neanderthals, uh, after careful study, have concluded that these were ancestors, uh, uh, that these ancestors were actually regular humans. There is evidence that human societies lived. Uh, this is up in the, uh, where the Ice Age, it kind of connects with that because they're up near the ice sheet where uh, ice was at in Europe. There's evidence that um, throughout the Ice Age, these Neanderthals, peoples, were there in that area. Many anthropologists now believe that their appearance was at least partially due, or could have been due to disease or poor nutrition, environmental factors, because they're living in a very cold and dark time, uh, and that can affect health and nutrition. Uh, their bones were thicker, their brow lines were protruding more. Uh, apart from highly questionable and faulty dating methods due uh, to evolutionary assumptions, there's not really any reason, though, why Neanderthals could not have lived at the same time as other civilizations like Egypt and Babylonia uh, that were developing unhindered by climate at lower altitudes. Uh, there is, what you'll notice, and we've talked about this a little bit, there is a lot of variation within the human genetic code. Like, there's a lot of different looking people out there. Bone structures, facial features, size, all kinds of stuff. Uh, let's look up a few verses on it. I, I want to, let's go to Genesis 6-4. Let me show you some differences here. Well, there's a picture of Neanderthals. See, there's some people today. We've got that color skin, and you got gingers. These people are pygmies from Africa. This picture was taken over 100 years ago. They're all adults, and they're all around four feet six or less. The whole tribe is that way. I, I talked to. Um, some of our missionaries that work in the rainforest in South America. There's entire tribes that they go visit, and none of them are over four and a half feet. None of them. 
And when they come in and the guy's six feet tall, he towers over everybody. There is a lot of variety. We talked about how big people used to be. I want you to look. Genesis, who's got that? 6 4. Six four, six four, six four. Genesis six four. Billy. I don't know that word. That's all right, just say it. Lilium were on the earth in those days and also afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old women of renown. They were the heroes of old, of renown. They were the Nephilim. Or the Nephil. Don't AKA that's that word, divine, divine, giants. There were the other translation, you might trans, your translation might say it. There were giants in those days. Not just in those days, but then after. Even after the flood, Noah and his family produced giants. Sons of Anak. The Rephaim were giants. Jeff? The characteristics of Neanderthals is that they may have been just the basic normal appearance of the early post-Diluvians. I was just now thinking maybe those are the pygmies of the giants that, anyway, one of the things that uh, you find in people that have excessive growth hormone by a pituitary adenoma, after growth of the bones, the, the growth plates have fused and they can't grow in length anymore. Acromegaly produces a lot of the characteristics we see in Neanderthals, including the very pronounced brow ridge um, and large face relative to the cranium. So it's very reasonable that Neanderthals were the people who lived hundreds of years, maybe you know, took 40 years to mature, and that maybe they were just the non-giants. There's also, of course, a lot of rumor that the giant skeletons that we've all heard about are being kept away because that would be so much antithetical to the idea of Very evolution. Damning. And they can't confuse us with those kind of facts. Yeah, yeah. I think that the Neanderthals, and the point is, they look different. They were humans, and they look different. But that's not any different than the fact that humans look different now. And we have... Biblical examples of humans that were vastly different and looked very different. Brother Larry. My question is this. If all said and done, we have two choices here. Believe man or believe God. God said he created man. And then you catch one of the men, and a few of them don't even believe in God, who say, who they gonna convince, try to convince us that man evolved. And I studied old Darwin there, man. He was a, 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 a choir boy at one time, supposed to be, and he went over and stayed all those years over in South America, and he gonna make up these ideas how he believed that things evolved. And we got two choices here. Believe the creator or believe the created. Thank you, brother. I was in the wrong spot. Uh, Numbers 13.32. Get there. Get there. They sent men, 12 spies, to spy out Canaan. It is long after the flood. They've already filled up the earth, right? Here we are, generations later. Those 12 spies came back and they spread among the Israelites a negative report about the land that they explored they said, the land we explored devours people living in it. All the people we saw there are of great size. We saw the Nephilim, the giants there. The descendants of Anak come from the Nephilim. We seemed like grasshoppers in our own eyes, and we looked the same to them. Giants. Later on, well later on, generations later, David fought a giant who the Bible tells us is about nine and a half feet tall. And he is the last, the minuscule, the baby, the runt, the end of the line of giants. He's it. 
right? He had some brothers, and they were big too. But they were dying out. They were a dying breed. We also had the, the Rephites, Deuteronomy 2.20. Get there. Deuteronomy 2.20. That too was considered the land of the Rephites, who used to live there, but the Ammonites called them Zamzumites. Giants are also known as Zamzuis or Zamzunites. They are a people of strong, they are people strong and numerous, and as tall as the Anakites. The Lord destroyed them from before the Ammonites, who drove them out, settled in their place. Deuteronomy 3.11, just a chapter later, we have Og, king of Bashan. Guess what he was? He was a Raphite. What does Raphite mean? It's actually not an ethnicity at all. It's a description. It's an adjective. The terrible ones. Terrible ones. They actually also use the word poetically when it comes to the evil dead, the souls that have departed to go to Sheol. They called them that too. They were terrible ones. And the Raphites were so evil and they were so big. And all king of Bashan, look, his bed, verse 11 of chapter 3, was made of iron. Most people were not made of iron back then. The reason was... His bed was 13 feet long and 6 feet wide. If you look at the cubits, it's actually 13 and a half to 14 and a half feet long. This man was big. He was one of the giants of those days. And he, if his bed is 13 and a half to 14 and a half feet long, how big is him? My bed's 6 feet long. Now, I'm only 6 foot 2, so my feet hang off the bottom. I don't know, maybe his feet hung off the bottom too. But he had to have been at least 13 feet tall, right? You don't get a bed that's dwarfing you. Plus, he's a giant. That's the reason they're lift, listing that in there. He's way bigger than Goliath. Keep in mind, they were people after the flood. This genetics and DNA was in Noah. I don't know if Noah was 6 foot tall or 8 foot tall or 10 foot tall. But he had the DNA and the genetics to have kids of all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors. And all of the races, I don't like that term because it's not correct. There's only one race, human race. But all the races that evolutionists talk about all came from the same family. We are all related. You can test anybody anywhere in this world and they have your same mom. I'm not even preaching. I'm just spitting facts. It's just the truth. We are all the same. Look at this. That's a six foot tall man. This is Goliath. There's been all kinds of 12 foot. I just, you know, doing research stuff, you find a lot of stuff. There's been a lot of, and some are like, eh, and some are like, yeah. But uh, there's been a lot of 12 foot uh, skeletons found. You'll find some otherwise, and I don't know if they're accurate or real, but. Definitely confirm 12 foot fossil. But of course, we find Og, who's he's maybe not 15 feet, maybe 13 and a half feet or 14 feet. But look at the size variation. This is a six foot man and a 12 foot man. We know they got bigger than 12 foot, but look at that. It's a lot of variation. A lot of, a, a lot of differences in DNA. A lot of stuff that's been lost over the years. Brother Chuck. that are six foot tall or a hundred guys like that. That's a whole heck of a lot of difference in what they can move. A lot of DNA has been lost. Yeah. The giant DNA has been lost. It's not like it, what, it, what it used to be. Now so you see somebody got a seven, half foot tall and you think he's a giant. You know, not, he's a reduced giant, right? Our minds are the same way. Our minds have been reduced. We're not getting smarter. Entropy is taking its doing a good job on, on our DNA and our bodies and everything else, and we're falling apart, yes. We also eat a lot less healthier, and we're, our ancestors used to eat all from the ground, and the meat that they did eat was cleaned a lot better than the meat that we eat. And they took care of their bodies, they slept better, they worked, and they slept. We, don't, we work and we don't sleep enough. You see it that way. Some people might see it the other way too, but yes. They, we have modern medicine today too, which extended our lifespans. Um, but I, I do know that my wife's, grand, my, Julie's parents raised on the farm. 
And it seems like all the farm raised people are a little healthier. But uh, so, depending on what you eat, definitely change your your life span. Um, Oh, by the way, you also have this. I, I forgot to mention. Here's some more variation you don't even think about. Isaiah 18.7. Go there. I'm not turning it. You, somebody read it. Isaiah 18.7. Who? Who's talking? Andrew? Okay, go ahead. No, you know, you got it. At that time, gifts will be brought to the Lord Almighty from a people tall and smooth-skinned, from a people feared far and wide. A people tall and smooth-skinned. You ever seen smooth-skinned? You ever notice there's some people that don't have body hair? It's not Kirtland. That kid's a hairy beast. He's been hairy since he was 12 years old. But there are people genetically that don't grow a lot of body hair, or any for that matter. Isn't that interesting? But then on the other side of things, let's read Genesis 25, 25. The first to come out was red, and his whole body was like a hairy garment, so they named him Esau. Esau's whole body as a baby was hairy. He was a hairball. You talk about clogging up sinks. As a baby, he was hairy from head to toe. Kid was a furball. He's hairy everywhere. He was so hairy that when his brother had to trick his dad, he literally took animal skin and covered his arms with it. You know how hairy an animal is. Covered his arms with animal skin so he could rub his arms. Oh, yeah, that's him. Can you imagine how hairy that guy was? Not only that, what else was he saw? Red. His name is the Hebrew word for red. His skin was red. There's lots of different skin sh uh, shades out there. Lot, lots of different body shapes. Lots of different facial feature and shapes. Listen, it's all part of the genetics that God gave to Adam and Eve and then Noah and his family passed on. It's not human evolution. We're all the same family. It's been proven. Close with this. What happened at Babel? There was a dispersion, right? When he confused their languages, they could no longer work together to build Babylon in disobedience. So he confused their languages and they did. Listen, if you ain't going to do what God's going to want you to do, he's going to make sure it's done. His will is going to be done no matter what. So he says, okay, we'll, we'll fix this real quick. Changes their languages. There's a whole study and all that too of how many languages... Are there on the earth that really they core come down to? It's an interesting study. And from that family split, we began to finally see biological differences emerged in peoples around the world. People began to look different depending upon where you was at. How they developed it depended upon where they lived and what the climate was like. Isolated people groups led to a loss of genetic information. Think about it. If you separate from a big group and now maybe all the good singers were over here and there's just a couple of good singers here, the good singers are probably going to fade out of the way and everybody's going to have, everybody's going to be tone deaf over a few years. Natural selection takes its course based upon isolation. When you separate from another group, you're going to lose genetic information, Right? If, if I go north and I am dark-skinned and I go away from the sun and away from the equator, there's going to be a less chance that I'm going to live long enough to produce offspring because my, my skin does not metabolize well in the, without sun. So I'm going to possibly get rickets, possibly have a short lifespan, and over time, everybody in the northern areas or the far southern areas are light-skinned people because they survive, but everybody at the equator that looked like me died in two generations because I would die at the equator. I would not live. The, I, in modern days, I could, but not in the 
Not in the ancient days when there wasn't air conditioning. I can't stand being in my house with the air conditioner not set at 67. So natural selection took its course, and that's why you see more dark-skinned people around the equator, light-skinned people towards the poles. And so eventually, everybody in that area looks the same. All the Hawaiians look the same. The Asians have certain features that are common to all Asians. North Americans have features common to North Americans. You see what I'm saying? And that's how that spread develop these biological differences. And here's an interesting thing. If you think about it, interracial marriage actually improves your genetics because it introduces lost DNA that the human body used to have. Now, thank you for doing your part, brother. He said, I'm doing my part. You know, I hear something funny. This was not planned. The first seven weddings at this church were biracial and a lot of people don't know this but my wife is one quarter Iranian it's true because Benny was half Iranian do you know that ever tell you that I called him Benny Laden sometimes he hated that <laughs> he did he hated that his, 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 his mom or his sister had a DNA sample thing down. You know where they do the things. And they knew that he was, anyway, it's a long story. I'm not going to tell you all. He really was from the Middle East. And uh, you can see it in Jenny's hair and stuff like that. But anyway, so yeah. I always tell my kids they're closer to Father Abraham because they got one eighth Middle East in them. So. Cultural differences also developed. Civilizations were born, you know. They would have all started on their own as they spread out. What if, all, what if most of the metal workers went one direction and the stone workers another? Or maybe they all just started from scratch, but you were limited to what was in that group now. It wasn't everybody together. So they were starting from different places, and where they traveled to dictated how long they lived and who survived and what tools were available for them to use and what they would eat, their nutrition. And all of that developed into the different cultures we have today, the different people groups that we have today. Evolution is today races, but people groups. Uh, people that lived in caves lived in caves out of necessity because when they were moving somewhere and they didn't have anything to start with, they started from scratch. And what better place to, to, to survive but a shelter that's already built? You know? Cave people were not dumb. They just used what they had and they were incredibly ingenious and used what they had to survive and to live. Next week, we're going here. So, dinosaurs. Probably our last week. Should be our last week. So, I love the dinosaurs. About what? What about, it's a funny story about Sarah. What was that? Con so, years ago, they had the Rolex events. You remember the Rolex events? And people were doing verbos or whatever with their own houses. So, and you could make a lot of money. Like houses are rented for like $1,000 a month. Our house rented for like $1,500. I mean, I, I mean a day. Our house, I think, we rented it. We think, I think it was like $1,200 or $1,500 a night to rent our house because people were coming from all over the world. It was the World Equestrian Games, not Rolex events. World Equestrian Games, sorry. So everybody was coming here from all over the world. People came to our house from Montana. We used the profits to remodel the house. Huh? Colorado. I don't know. They showed up as four women. A mother and a daughter. They were both adults. And then two women that were like maybe sisters of the older woman. They were really nice. And they came in and they had never heard anybody speak from Cynthiana. And they asked me my name and I told them. And I'm from Missouri and Kentucky, uh, Georgetown. She's from Cynthiana. And so when she spoke, she said, Saira. Saira, Saira. I don't know how she said it. However she says it, Saira. And the lady says, excuse me? She said it again. And then she repeated it back. Saira. That's beautiful. I have never heard that name before. Saira. 
say, that's beautiful. What's that mean? She says, I think it means God's princess or something. <laughs> so when I call her Saera, that's because that lady from Colorado repeated it. And we didn't correct her. We didn't want to go into it. So we just let her think it was a beautiful new name. She'd never heard before, Sarah. But anyway, <laughs> Saera. All right. Any closing comments or questions or thoughts? Yes, Jeremy. Uh, they finally got his kid. They did a uh, dialysis treatment on him because they was going to have to do a biopsy because they didn't think the kidney was going to take. He had a kidney replacement. Yeah, yeah. And um, they did a 45-minute session of that, and it shot his numbers down, so I guess that jump-started the kidney. So they sent him home the next day, so he's home now. Doing good. And uh, just continue prayer for him, and I appreciate everything. Good report. Thank you, brother. Anybody else before we close? All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Father, we thank you tonight that we can come together as your family, one family, Lord God, literally, and uh, we are one in Christ as well. We just pray, God, uh, you'd help us to just be in love with you, Lord God, and grow and extend our faith. Help us to know your word better and know you better, and I just pray, God, as we leave and as we return, that you would just be with us and may your blessing, your spirit guide us. In Jesus' name we pray, and everyone said, Thank you.